Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, a.k.a. Skylar Madison, and today I'm just coming out with another Sketchbook Sessions, okay? And uh, this this video is going to be a little bit different because I've already drawn out everything that needs to be drawn out. And uh, I more so have a presentation of what this self-made art book that your sketchbook naturally becomes over time, okay? Like, you are creating a sketchbook by the very nature, like an, an art book, an educational book. You are creating that just by the nature of you using a sketchbook. And so, in general, this series is supposed to show you the sorts of things that you should typically be thinking when you're working inside of a sketchbook. It also, this video most especially, is actually uh, kind of a reference in two different ways. In that, not only do you learn something from the illustration, but you also kind of have a reference as to maybe this is a good way to kind of think about my, my own sketchbook. You know, that's kind of what the, the the two little target bits of information that should be kind of sinking into your head uh, when watching this video. And of course, this image, as well as all the other images, will eventually be shared on my social media, be it Twitter, of uh, Facebook, Instagram, I don't know, sometimes I share on Facebook at least, um, my Discord server. If I forget to post on Discord or Twitter or anything, remind me to post an, the image of the day. Like, you, you don't necessarily have to only ingest like, share, and subscribe in order to uh, support a content creator that you appreciate. You can remind them to make their their daily like uh, picture of the day uh, on Twitter or something like that. You can you can give your favorite content creators little reminders like that. And I tell you what, that can, helps them make sure that they're on top of things so that they show up on social media algorithms better. Okay, uh, so yeah, I, I would appreciate that from my audience if you guys could. But yeah, anyhow, so uh, let's let's start with this. Okay, so we have the layout of the page basically inside of this. Uh, basically, we have three columns to this page. Uh, to the, the middle column is discussing curvilinear perspective. The left column is two, but it's all text. Okay, but this is curvilinear perspective information, and this is linear perspective information. Okay, and so um, like. This this is the scene that I've gone ahead and created right here. And so I go over here and you can see I pretty much made a, a, the exact same scene again in linear perspective, specifically one point perspective. Yes, things would have looked a little bit differently if I drew it out as two point perspective and then three point perspective, but I don't think I need every single form of perspective in order to show you the difference from linear to curvilinear perspective. If you want to see other examples of like two point perspective and three point perspective, you can go ahead and make your own okay so okay let, let's go ahead and talk about what you can observe from this okay so i drew out these um little h shapes okay because like uh, basically inside of this curvilinear perspective grid that i have here that allows me to see in uh 180 degrees uh, i have these h shapes uh, the, uh which basically symbolizes like what if you're in a parking lot and you have a bunch of parking spaces okay so that's what those h shapes shapes are. All right. And notice how right here, it is really close. This, these parking spaces, they're really close to us, but over here and over here, not so much because they're going towards a vanishing point. Curvilinear perspective has shared vanishing points. These lines are going horizontally. If the zenith was on the screen, uh, you know, the zenith would be something like here and the nadir is here. You know, the, they're paired uh, vanishing points with uh, curvilinear perspective. Perspective. Okay, so the vanishing point that's just right up there, that's the zenith, that is literally up, and this is literally you looking 100% down, 90 degrees down, all right? So we see these parking spaces coming towards us to this region right here and then away from us, okay? That's some of the benefit of curvilinear perspective, which is not available to you at all, not even a little bit, not even slightly, inside of uh, one-point perspective, two-point perspective, and three-point perspective. You can see, like, if this uh, went on, okay, if the, the, the parking spaces continued, okay, and then I go ahead and, and try to draw a bunch of H shapes out here, there comes a point where it just becomes kind of meaningless, and, uh, like, the, the lines that you're, you're drawing, they don't really represent what, what you're trying to draw at some point. If you exceed outside of a particular um, region of space, they're, they're basically the grand maximum viewing angle that a 
linear perspective image can hold inside of it is a 60 degree cone of vision. And so that is why these are not uh, curving, okay, towards a paired vanishing points. That's why they're not going towards paired vanishing points, okay? So uh, one thing to note is this. So you'll notice that these uh, street lamps, okay, I have a street lamp that goes up and then it goes towards the north vanishing point like so, okay? And then I have like all a whole bunch of them doing that. And that's cool, that's fine. Notice how they are, like they are single file, but it's not something that you're you're going to be really consciously aware of or looking for in spatial relationships when, when you're looking at curvilinear perspective images. You're not gonna be really seeing uh, too much curvilinear perspective. Uh, images that, that are trying to communicate the concept that objects are parallel with one another, co-linear and stuff like that. It's really difficult to communicate that sort of information. Uh, but Linear Perspective excels at uh, showing that objects are single file. Linear Perspective really, really excels at that, okay? Like, you can see everything is nice, neat, and orderly inside of the scene. You can definitely see that with uh, Linear Perspective. However, uh, so that's that's a plus uh, that Linear Perspective has, but Curve Linear Perspective has something different, okay? you Basically, with this, what I've gone ahead and drawn here, just really roughly, this is designed to be an image where the camera is about that big and it pans across over to this direction and so that it looks like a, you know a panning action with your head turning basically this is a head turn image it's a head turner as your as your eye goes from one end of the canvas to the other you have turned your head inside of the image and and that's the reason why you would want a uh, curve linear perspective but linear perspective is impo it is impossible to turn your head in linear perspective uh, you can pan in linear perspective but you can't turn your head all right and so that's that's the the benefits and disadvantages okay so uh, again notice 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 how, although you can recognize that these are all parallel uh, and, you know, they're all going the same direction, they're all single file, uh, this version of the image communicates that just a little bit better with the linear perspective. Okay, I go back here, you still get the idea that things are in line with one another. Curve linear perspective can still communicate that, but just not as clearly where these are single file. And that's fine, okay, but this, this is to help you get get an idea as to uh, what to expect uh, as you go from one image to another. Drawing with linear and curvilinear perspective, things to keep in mind. Okay, so uh, here's another uh, little bit of uh, advice, okay? Find your vanishing points. How do you do that? Okay, now also just before I go about discussing finding your vanishing points, okay? This face right here represents the top face. You are looking down at uh, this cylinder right here. Okay, this is a cylinder. You're looking down at it. How do you know that? Well, you have the top face of it showing. So therefore, you're looking down at it. Okay, you have the exact same cylinder and you put that face on the bottom and that tells you, hey, I'm looking at the bottom of this. So therefore, I'm looking up at that object. Okay, that's how this works. So basically, what I suggest that you do is if you want to find your vanishing points, like uh, there's a lot of situations where people are illustrating an image and they're asking themselves, am I looking up or down at objects at this part of the composition? Or maybe you're asking yourself when you're drawing, I always have really bland camera angles when I draw in perspective. How do I get a good camera angle? You might be thinking that, so let me go ahead and help you out with that. Okay, so ask yourself the question, what is the subject of your canvas? This basically means what is it that's that your eye is going to be most gravitated towards? Now, with me, you know, typically if you're draw drawing with vanishing points, what you're trying to figure out is, um, well, you're, you're trying to figure out how to draw your background is what you're trying to do. And uh, personally, I like working with the background first because it sets the camera angle for everything, including your characters. And so you have something to go off of for a camera angle for throughout the entire process, okay? But ultimately, think of the subject of the image. Now, for this uh, sketchbook image, uh, I have a picnic table right here, okay? So basically, uh, th this is a picnic table right here, okay? Um, now, what I suggest that you do is, okay, so the subject is a picnic table. Uh, picture the subject of the, the canvas 
you know, which is the picnic table, as a box. Draw a 3D box freehand until you find the camera angle that you like for the subject, which is, you know, again, a picnic table. So in this case, I drew out this uh, particular box right here, okay? And then I went ahead and moved it up here so that I could have a better demonstration. And so this, this picnic table is based off of the exact same box that I drew out earlier, okay? That, that's, that's down here. It's based off of this same box down here, okay? So what you do is uh, to find your vanishing points that will look nice for your scene with the camera angle you want after you've gone ahead and created your your camera angle essentially with a 3d box uh, what you do is you follow the left side of that you know the, you follow this out and then you follow this out and then you follow this out until they intersect at a, at a location okay and this is vanishing point number three right here you see that and that's vanishing point number three at least with the box that i created not all images will have edges to your box going towards a vanishing point. And that's because it's one point or two point perspective. So once again, if we follow these two edges to where they intersect, we get vanishing point number one. And then we follow uh, maybe this one and then this one and then this one off towards the vanishing point or off towards the area where they should intersect. We come up with vanishing point number two. We also, between the two of these points, here have the horizon line right here okay all of this information is your camera angle okay from vanishing point one where it's located to be vanishing point number one and vanishing point number two and its location to be vanishing point number two and vanishing point number three and all of that good information about uh you know vanishing point number three all of this vanishing point one vanishing point two and vanishing point three that is your camera angle if you're working with a three-point perspective image and now I, I have other examples I think of this but like if if you wind up with uh, you know drawing out different boxes and you draw something out kind of like this and then you're like okay yeah let me go ahead and follow this out towards a vanishing point okay and you're like oh yeah this is this is where the vanishing point is uh, that's a one-point vanishing point and then you try following these out and they never seem to ever intersect that just means Means that it's a one-point perspective image okay um, that that's all it means so don't don't fret <laughs> if that happens to you okay really quick your your composition will, will will come into existence extremely quickly if you just start out with something as simple as uh, a box or two and trying to get them to, to match or, or and finding your vanishing point it's really easy uh, to start uh, composing an image with, with just a box picturing the main subject of your of your image uh, where where the most eyes will be resting at for the longest period of time that specific location on the canvas yeah what is your subject in that spot what is what is the thing that you're drawing in that spot picture it as a box draw that box and then follow the edges towards vanishing points that's how you find your vanishing points and uh, that's how uh, you get the camera angle that you want okay really important to note that okay back to curvilinear perspective okay now I don't have any information uh, on this page that's linear perspective but basically here's what we got here um, there is an illusion uh, that uh, with curvilinear perspective uh, where objects will orbit a vanishing point okay so basically you'll notice around this region here they come out and then back in again like so okay and it looks like they are all kind of orbiting this vanishing point right here this red vanishing point right there okay it looks like that it, it, and if you were to look at it from a top view it would look as though if this were the vanishing point it looks kind of like uh those street lamps are all kind of going like this okay so so this th this is why uh, curvilinear perspective is a little bit more difficult to uh, communicate the concept that objects are parallel or, or you know things are aligning with other objects in a very particular way okay that, that this is why curvilinear perspective has difficulty with that so you can still communicate that stuff I want to stress that you can still communicate that things are single file parallel and stuff like that with curvilinear perspective if you're good enough but you know 
curvilinear perspective is not necessarily the best thing at communicating that information. Uh, li with linear perspective, it would more so look like this. If this vanishing point were way out here, uh, basically those uh, street lights look more like this with linear perspective. And so that is the reason why. That is the reason why uh, linear perspective uh, is kind of superior when showing that objects are parallel with one another or are, are collinear and stuff like that. Like you see this here and yeah, you kind of understand it. You kind of understand it over here as well. But since it's curved, uh, something about your brain has difficulty perceiving it uh, because you're seeing more than 90 degrees, like you're seeing way more than 90 degrees worth of viewing angle at one given time in an, the image. This is not how the human eye sees the environment. Curvilinear perspective. However, like if you had a compound eye or like eyes that are that were more set uh, to your left side of your head and to your right side of your head, if your eyeballs, if they were literally on the left and right side of your head, okay, we would have this sort of eyesight that's more like a deer's. And a deer does see uh, a lot closer to uh, 360 degrees to some extent. Uh, same thing with a fly. Uh, th this is how, this is more so how does, uh, deer, how, uh, a, a creature with compound eye would see the universe. Okay. This, this is, this is more accurate to that. Okay. So we're not used to seeing like those sorts of animals. And so when we see something like this, what's in blue here that can allow you to see 360 degrees, basically it, it can confuse the brain. And because because it confuses the brain, it's hard to communicate that things are parallel or, you know, perpendicular and stuff like that to other objects and spatial relationships. That That is the reason why it's difficult to communicate that sort of information, okay? So the final image I think that I'm going to leave you guys with is this. This is a uh, kind of, this is my impressionistic painting uh, that wound up actually becoming a completely different composition, but I love this composition of the same story. But uh, th this, this image image I, I drew off camera a while ago. This image wound up becoming this image right here where it's got all of this stuff, uh, all of this cross hatching, and I zoom out and you can see this massive world and you can see that, that this guy is jumping off this impossible uh, height to attack uh, the main protagonist, okay? And uh, like this image right here was inspired by this impressionistic sketch that I made off camera. I did not use this sketch primarily because you guys were not included when I drew it. I just simply uh, didn't press record and so I never used this particular sketch. So you guys will get this sketch on my social media just simply uh, because I'm you know, it is such a beautiful picture. I love this picture. Uh, like, even if it's just a sketch, just in the phase that it is in currently, I love it. And I think you guys might want it. So that's what's going to happen. Anyways, guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to join my Discord server and have more of a participation with my community, a link to my Discord server is in the video description below. And of course, if you'd like to support this channel, there's an image in the upper right corner of the screen right now that leads to my Teespring where you could purchase one of my t-shirts. Any support would be much appreciated. And if you've enjoyed this content and would like to see more, feel free to click on anything else appearing on the screen right now.